Number 6. Southern Television Broadcast Interruption On November 26, 1977, television viewers in parts of southern England were startled when acclaimed extraterrestrial interrupted a news broadcast. At 5.10 p.m., presenter Andrew Gardner was reading the news when suddenly his audio was cut off and replaced with a voice identifying himself as an alien with a warning for humanity. The video portion of the broadcast was not affected. There are several videos on YouTube claiming to be recordings of the event. However, these are reconstructions, as no known recordings of the actual event are known to exist. This has led to some discrepancies regarding the transcript of the message, as well as the alien's name. Most sources provide the following transcript. This is the voice of Vrilon, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. For many years you have seen us as lights in the skies. We speak to you now in peace and wisdom, as we have done to your brothers and sisters all over this, your planet Earth. We come to warn you of the destiny of your race and your world, so that you may communicate to your fellow beings the course you must take to avoid the disasters which threatens your world and the beings on our worlds around you. This is in order that you may share in the Great Awakening as the planet passes into the New Age of Aquarius. The New Age can be a time of great peace and evolution for your race, but only if your rulers are made aware of the evil forces that can overshadow their judgments. Be still now and listen, for your chance may not come again. All your weapons of evil must be removed. The time for conflict is now past, and the race of which you are a part may proceed to the higher stages of its evolution if you show yourselves worthy to do this. You have but a short time to learn to live together in peace and goodwill. Small groups all over the planet are learning this and exist to pass on the light of the dawning of the new age to you all. You are free to accept or reject their teachings, but only those who learn to live in peace will pass to the higher realms of spiritual evolution. Hear now the voice of Vrilon, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. Be aware also that there are many false prophets and guides at present operating on your world. They will suck your energy from you, the energy you call money, and will put it to evil ends and give you worthless dross in return. Your inner divine self will protect you from this. You must learn to be sensitive to the voice within that can tell you what is truth and what is confusion, chaos, and untruth. Learn to listen to the voice of truth which is within you and you will lead yourselves onto the path of evolution. This is our message to our dear friends. We have watched you growing for many years as you too have watched our lights in your skies. You know now that we are here, and that there are more beings on and around your Earth than your scientists admit. We are deeply concerned about you and your path towards the light, and will do all we can to help you. Have no fear, seek only to know yourselves, and live in harmony with the ways of your planet Earth. We here at the Ashtar Galactic Command thank you for your attention. We are now leaving the planes of your existence. May you be blessed by the supreme love and truth of the cosmos. Strangely, other sources provide a much shorter and more ominous transcript of the broadcast. This is the voice of Asteron. I am an authorized representative of the intergalactic mission, and I have a message for the planet Earth. We are beginning to enter the period of Aquarius, and there are many corrections which have to be made by Earth people. All your weapons of evil must be destroyed. You have only a short time to learn to live together in peace. You must live in peace, or leave the galaxy. After the broadcast, hundreds of people phoned their local television stations to inquire about the broadcast, and the event was a major news story in Britain and around the world. Investigation into the event led to speculation that the hacker had targeted a specific television transmitter with an unusual configuration that made it susceptible to this type of intrusion, but even with this vulnerability, investigators believed it still would have required considerable technical knowledge 
to accomplish the hijack. All attempts to locate the hijacker failed, and no one has ever come forward to claim responsibility. Some also take the message at face value, believing it was not a hack, but rather a legitimate warning to humanity, and the event is sometimes included in UFO lore. Number 5. The Max Headroom Incident The Max Headroom Incident is by far the most famous broadcast hijack. Unlike many of the hijacks on this list, full video of the event exists, which I will provide a link to in this video's description. On November 22, 1987, at about 9 p.m., WGN-TV, a news station in Chicago, had their broadcast interrupted for about 25 seconds with a video of a person wearing a Max Headroom mask and sunglasses seated in front of a swaying corrugated metal sheet. There was no audio other than a buzzing noise, and technicians were quickly able to cut off the hijacker and restore the normal broadcast. About two hours later, another Chicago TV station, the PBS affiliate WTTW, had their broadcast of an episode of Doctor Who hijacked by the same person. This is the more famous of the two hijacks that night, and this time, the hijack included audio as well as video. As before, the hijack displayed a man seated in front of a swaying, corrugated metal sheet, wearing a Max Headroom mask and sunglasses. Max Headroom is a fictional character, originally created by British director Rocky Morton, to be the host of an MTV-style music video show, and was billed as the first computer-generated TV personality, which is incorrect. Although the backgrounds in the Max Headroom segments were computer-generated, the character himself was portrayed by actor Matt Frewer wearing a latex mask. The character proved popular and later appeared in the cyberpunk TV movie Max Headroom, 20 minutes into the future, which gave the character's backstory as being a computer-generated being created from the memories of a comatose journalist in a dystopian future. The character also acted as a spokesperson for several brands, including New Coke. In the hijack, the man dressed as Max Headroom speaks in a distorted voice and launches into a bizarre rant filled with non-sequiturs, including numerous pop culture references, such as humming the theme to the 1959 TV series Clutch Cargo, singing Your Love is Fading, a line from a Temptation song, and holding up a can of Pepsi while saying Catch the Wave, the slogan for New Coke. He made reference to WGN sportscaster Chuck Swirsky, calling him a frickin' liberal, and proclaiming himself to be better than him, and at one point holds up his middle finger to the camera. After saying, oh no, they're coming to get me, the scene changes to show the man bent over, his buttocks partially exposed, while a second person, visible only from the neck down, and who was either a woman or a man dressed as a woman, proceeds to spank him with a fly swatter. After this, the broadcast of Doctor Who resumed as normal. An FCC investigator into the incident stated that the perpetrators, if caught, faced up to a $100,000 fine and a year in prison. However, the statute of limitations on the crime ran out in 1992 without any suspects being named. In 2011, a user on Reddit made a detailed post claiming that he believed he knew who was responsible for the hijack. He said that in the mid-1980s, he had lived in Chicago and made friends with a group of computer hackers, two of whom were a pair of brothers, one of which the poster believed displayed the same strange sense of humor and speech patterns as the person in the hijack. He did not reveal their identities, but after another Redditor came forward, to provide corroborating evidence to his story, some online sources went as far as to declare the case solved. However, in 2016, the poster had the opportunity to meet with some people who had worked as TV technicians and engineers in Chicago in the 80s. 
Based on those conversations, he concluded that there was no way the brothers could have been responsible, as the hijack required the use of specialized equipment that would not have been available to the public in 1987, or at least would have been so expensive as to effectively eliminate almost any outsider as the culprit. In other words, the hijack was almost assuredly an inside job. As to the identity of the hijackers, unless they decide to come forward, it's likely that their identities will remain a mystery. Number 4. The May Day Interruption This entry may not be a hijack. According to the television station involved, it was a glitch. However, there are still some strange things about it that warrant its inclusion. On January 8, 2007, Channel 7 in Australia was broadcasting an episode of the Canadian TV series Mayday, a documentary series about air accidents. For several minutes, the audio was replaced by a loop of someone saying, Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. Have a look. What's strangest about the incident was Channel 7's response. They claimed it was a technical glitch, which resulted in audio from a news story about an attack on a convoy in Iraq being played in place of the program's normal audio, and claimed the voice was repeating, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, despite the voice clearly saying, Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. If it was a glitch, it was an extremely unusual one. Some have also speculated that it was some form of hijack, or an attempted hijack, and due to the relative notoriety of hijacks like the Max Headroom incident, the station was not acknowledging it as a hijack, in order not to give the perpetrators any publicity. Number 3. Zombie Apocalypse Hijack On Monday, February 10th, 2013, TV viewers of several stations in the United States received an authentic-looking emergency alert warning. The emergency alert system, which is usually used for tornado warnings and other severe weather events, instead warned about a zombie uprising. Take a look. Your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Follow the messages on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. Do not attempt to approach or apprehend these bodies as they are considered extremely dangerous. I repeat, civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Follow the messages on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. In all, 10 stations in Montana, Michigan, and Nebraska received the phony warning. According to a spokesperson for one of the affected stations, the prank was likely caused by hackers somehow gaining access to the emergency alert system through a back door. The perpetrator was never caught, and they may have been disappointed that their hijack didn't have much of an effect, as there are no reports of anyone taking the fake warning seriously, although there were reports of some people calling TV stations to ask jokingly if guns would be an effective defense against the zombies. Number 2. The Old Couple Hijack The Old Couple Hijack, as it has since come to be known, is perhaps the most mysterious hijack on this list. On the early morning hours of July 13, 2007, WJLA-TV, an ABC affiliate in Washington, D.C., had their signal interrupted for almost two hours, during which time a photo of a man and a woman was displayed on screen in place of the normal programming. On websites and videos about the incident, this photo is often shown and is claimed to be the photo which was displayed during the hijack, which has given the incident the name the old couple hijack or sometimes the odd couple hijack. However, this is not the photo which was displayed during the hijack. This photo is from a creepypasta a story about a fake broadcast hijack called the Wyoming Incident. 
Several videos of the old couple hijack were uploaded to YouTube shortly after the broadcast, but all were very quickly removed due to copyright claims by ABC. For this reason, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to find actual footage or even still images of the incident. However, an archived news report from the time of the hijack describes the photo as a grainy black and white photo of a man and a woman. The man is wearing sunglasses and the woman has a string or possibly a strand of hair hanging out of her mouth. The report indicates that although no nudity was visible in the photo, it had an amateurish, seedy quality to it that suggested pornography. Similar to the Mayday hijack, the station involved appeared to not want to give any publicity to the event, at first stating they had no idea how it had happened and they had no idea who the people in the photo were, but later blaming it on an equipment malfunction which caused an image from an upcoming episode of the Oprah Winfrey show to become frozen on screen. If that was the case, then why bother copyright striking video clips of the event? Number 1. The Area 51 Caller This last event is not so much a hijack as a broadcast interruption, but I'm including it on this list due to the incredibly creepy nature of the event. Coast to Coast AM is a syndicated radio talk show created and hosted by Art Bell and dealing with subjects like the paranormal and conspiracy theories. On September 11th, 1997, a man claiming to be a former employee of Area 51 called into the show, apparently in a state of panic, and began to warn the listeners of coming future disasters. Host Art Bell at first appeared somewhat skeptical of the caller, but asks the caller to provide more information. Then, about two minutes into the call, the interruption happens. The station is completely knocked off the air. Have a listen for yourself. I, I've kind of been running a, across the country. Um, oh man, I don't know where to start. They're, uh, they're, they're going to... Um, they'll triangulate on this position really, really soon. So um, you can't spend a lot of time on the phone, so give us something quick. Okay, um, um, okay, what, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are, they're, uh, they're, they're extra-dimensional beings that an earlier precursor of the, um, space program made contact with. Uh, they, they are not what they claim to be. Uh, they have infiltrated a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of aspects of, of, of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Uh, the, the disasters that are coming, they, the, the military, I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them. And there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now, Art. But they're not doing, they're not doing anything. They are not. They want the major population centers wiped out so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable. Discharge. <laughs> I started getting... ...lost all transmit capability on this end, here in Nevada. The transmitter went belly up suddenly for some unknown reason. I've never seen it do this in all the years, all the years that we've been on the air. I have never seen the transmitter in this way just simply fail, a massively fail, like a massive heart attack of some kind. And so we have gone to a backup system to get the signal to you right now, and I presume it is getting to you right now. I will provide a link to a longer version of the call with subtitles in this video's description. Obviously, the timing of the station being knocked off the air led many people to speculate that some government agency monitoring the broadcast cut off the transmitter. To make things stranger, a week after the incident, 
a caller who identified himself as Brian, claimed to be responsible for the original call and said that the call was a prank. Have a listen. Everybody, I am the Area 51 caller. Um, that's, that's my statement. And let you or whatever tear it apart. <laughs> You, you claim you're the Area 51 I I am the man. How do you account for the fact, Area 51 caller, okay. that part of the way through your spiel, the satellite went down? I have no idea, and it scared the heebie-jeebies out of me that night. <laughs> uh, I've called a number of times on your specialty line nights doing different you know, kind of wacky characters, and that's all that one was supposed to be. And uh, if the call had been completed, it would have been ancient history by now. And has, it, has it occurred to you, as uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard suggested tonight, that perhaps, if you're really what you say you are, you created the reality of the rest of the situation and took down my satellite? That scares the heebie-jeebies out of me because it means that what I was saying was somehow correct. Some have claimed that they do not believe that this person was the same person who made the original call. Others instead speculated on something that Brian and Art touched on in their second conversation, that the call was essentially truthful fiction, which, while false, sounded real enough for someone to take action. Or was it all just a huge coincidence? You decide. Once again, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thanks again.